So we'll open the Finance Commission meeting of June 3rd, and uh, we'll take up the budget. Let me give you just an update as to where, where I am. I had done some work today, which I'll go over in a minute. I sent it to Anna to have her take a look. She's retuning her numbers as well and didn't get back to me before this evening. So what I'll do is we'll go over the numbers that I put together, just as a broad picture. We will then uh, talk about any suggested changes or additions or anything that we might want to have the town manager and or the council consider. And then um, as soon as I get Anna's response, which will probably be tomorrow, I'll pass that along. We can figure out whether we have to work off of that. I'll do a draft anyway of the um, recommendations that we come up with. And then since the council will not be voting until uh, the 16th of June, we will have some time next week to finalize everything. So that's kind of the broad outline. Is that okay to everyone? Yep. yep. Okay, all right. Um, my paperwork here. So I looked at the <clears throat> revised general fund budget that Austin and Anna submitted. And that's the one uh, that came attached to that letter they sent out on about a week or so ago with the spreadsheets. And the, the budget for the general fund on that worksheet both revenues and expenses work out to 53 million nine hundred sixty four thousand five hundred fifty five dollars and seventy five cents i then went to the enterprise funds which in the uh, original budget totaled twelve million seven thousand eight hundred seventy three dollars and seventy three cents and then there were revolving funds of one hundred ninety eight thousand $254. So that total was 66,170, excuse me, $66,170,683.48. $66 but what I omitted, what Jana pointed out, is we had the reduction in the water and sewer enterprise fund assessments from the MWRA. And also, um, she was talking to uh, Steve Calla, and there's another item in there of 20,000 he feels does not need to be increased. I think it's 80,000 now. So there is a reduction in the water and sewer enterprise fund, which affects the bottom line of all the enterprise funds, of $183,904. So I went back, I made the adjustment. The general fund stays the same. The enterprise fund reduces to 11 million. Eight twenty-three, nine hundred sixty-nine dollars and seventy-three cents. The enterprise funds remain the same. So the revised budget that we're looking at now is sixty-five million, nine hundred eighty-six thousand, seven hundred seventy-nine dollars and forty-eight cents, subject to Anna's confirmation. But I think it's it's going to be in that very close to that. Um, the enterprise funds is really uh, we can talk about those, but in terms of adjusting them. I don't think there's much we can do there or with the revolving funds. So we're back looking at the general funds and having probably picking up the discussion that we left off the other night. Um, and I think what we kind of talked about the other night was, um, just get my right notes here, I'm sorry. Of recommending a transfer by the town council after they vote on the budget because we had that discussion about whether or not uh, we or the council has the right to adjust the projected revenues or expenses um, would be to have the council vote to transfer out of the stabilization account $200,000 for the purposes of supplementing school budget. That was one that we put on the table. We didn't vote on it, but that's on the table for further discussion tonight. And let's see. I think we also discussed the 
Board Banks road plan study, uh, which was a $56,500 item. And uh, we talked about possibly removing that from the capital expense this year because the budget, excuse me, the prior plan, one that was done a few years ago, uh, which was hard for anybody to locate, uh, was found, Austin was able to get it. We felt that perhaps we should have that plan evaluated and determine whether or not we need a new study. And if we do, the new study maybe cost less if you take in the fact that it's got this other plan to work off of. Uh, we didn't vote on that, I don't believe, but that was one of the other items we talked about the other night. Uh, Jim brought up, um, I'll say a concern about the $205,000 of positions that might be um, reduced or terminated depending on how severe the financial situation is. And uh, we, we kicked around whether or not we should ask specifics. I think the consensus the other night was no, but we can talk about that again if you want. And we also talked about the town planner, a salary of $47,500 for six months. We talked about everything from deleting it for this year anyway, to leaving it where it is, or to reducing the funding and having it a three month budget rather than a six month budget and using that funds like 23,000 or so for some other purpose in the budget. And these are just, I, I, these are just recommendations we can consider to the council um, if we choose to. So, and then of course we talked about making sure that the additional nursing or additional health staff and the inspectional services additional funding somehow be uh, found or that we certainly recommend that they find it. Perhaps we can come up with a way to fund it, I'm not sure. I believe the nursing component is a portion of that would be through the CARES Act. Uh, but I don't think from what I've seen that that would be a full year, that there wouldn't be enough money in that for a full time person for a full year. Uh, but it would be a start. And then there's the possibility that some CARES Act could be used for the inspectional services for the code enforcement. But well, again, I'm not sure about that. And perhaps we could fund some of that uh, with planning money if we choose to do anything with the planner. So those are, it's kind of a summary of where we were the other night. And um, I don't know if anybody has anything to add to that or we can just start going forward this evening on what uh, your thoughts are about recommendations to the council. The only other thing that I had, Bob, was um, it was brought up about a $3,000 tree removal at the senior center. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, did we ever conclude anything on that? No, we didn't conclude anything on, on anything. <laughs> we, we're just putting <laughs> okay. it out there. <laughs> and I think we also talked about um, filling the vacancy in the finance department, the accounts yeah. payable right. position as right. well, which I believe would be 20000 for the six months, half a year. Okay, so um, I'm open to what anybody would like to discuss at the moment. Um, and then we can go from there. Is there. Do we want to go back and just take some of these items again and reconfirm what we or confirm what we thought or bring it to be, uh, Bill had his hand up. I'll go um, real quick. Um, I feel with the school getting an extra 200000 out of the stabilization fund, um, I think everyone at the school does a great job and um, I don't think it's their fault, but just from a big picture standpoint, I feel like this town might be in a major hole financially and um, you know, how are we going to make up that gap? And the police are working, the DPW is working, but you know, factually the schools have been closed for three months. Um, so I, you know, it just intuitively seems like if there's any savings, school always seems like it needs more money than we can give them. And even when they've been shut for three months, they say we need an extra 200,000 out of the stabilization fund. Um, 
you know, there's things I think like a lot of the teachers get paid for after school programs. They never suggested they could ever save any money there. Um, so I just feel like, and I know people don't like to trim departments, but, um, and I don't know, again, how much control we have with the school, but I think it's crazy to think that we could have a massive budget hole and everybody's working, but the schools, and they're not working at all. Teachers are not meeting with kids on a daily basis. Secretaries are not going in. Um, that we couldn't, and this is why I asked about the um, force majeure, um, you know, if, if push comes to shove and we had to look at things realistically, um, I would look at the school first. So I understand that might be something we can't do, but at the very least, I would not be inclined to pull 200,000 out of the stabilization fund for them. I would, they should find a way to make it work. Yeah. I second that, Bill. Thank I you. second what you're saying. Um, I also think um, in regards to the, um, the planning or the planner, um, I heard what Jan said last week um, in regards to that not being a sufficient amount of money, even half a year to pay for a decent planner. Uh, and that made sense to me. However, I think that we should still keep that money there. Um, that money, I believe, uh, and the counselors maybe can um, um, tell me if they think otherwise that that money is being put towards um, planning services by people like VHB, who we've brought in as a contractor to help us with the middle school project. And it's still there um, helping to fund these sort of um, projects that we have ongoing in town currently. That's all. Anybody else? Yeah. I, I just have to first talk about the schools a little bit and I understand Bill's point and, and I understand Tracy agreeing. Um, to say that the schools aren't working at all is just a factually incorrect statement. Um, I'm sure that there are certain uh, individuals that can't work because, you know, and, and I'm not even 100% sure what they are, but if they're uh, a cafeteria worker, obviously they can't be serving food. I don't know if they're donating at the food bank or whatever they're doing, but I do know teachers are working. I do know that uh, specialists are working. I do know that uh, staffing in, in terms of uh, administration is working. In some cases, more hours than they would have before. They've been tasked with doing something that has never been done before. They're not just working remotely like an accountant might be doing and doing the same job, but just from the comforts of their home. They are creating a whole new way of learning for kids. Now, do I think that the kids are getting, and I think the teachers again will agree, are they getting the same education that they would get in the schools? Absolutely, 100% not. But are they getting some sort of education? Yes, and they've had to reinvent the wheel. So I think, you know, I, I can understand the position that somebody might not want to give more money to the schools, but to say that they're not working, therefore they don't deserve it, is, is I think misleading in some respects. Um, in terms of the grant uh, office or the, the planning position, I am 100% in favor of holding that off until July 1st. Um, in terms of, you know, the other question, which we didn't discuss, but just looking really finally through the budget today, like finally point at all the points and looking at, for example, the Essex Tech budget, it's a 77% increase to a number that in no way is divisible by the 20,000 that I thought it was per student. I don't know where the number came from. I know it's based on, it's not based on factual information. It's based on year old information. Don't know what it is. I don't really think we should be touching it, but I think it's something that we should ask about. Um, <clears throat> you know, it, the big, to me, elephant in the room, and again, I don't think it's something that we can, I would love to, to use it, but I don't think we can, is the trash money. And I think that that's something that, you know, I don't know how people feel about making a comment about it, but that's, you know, $1,264,301 that needs to, I believe, somehow fairly for every citizen needs to be subsidized in some way, shape or form. Not all of it, but some of it, and I think that's only fair to people that live in apartments. Well, not apartments necessarily, but condos or, or facilities like that, or multi-families. People that own over three families uh, are paying for their own trash, or business owners that live in town are paying for their own trash. 
Um, I think I look at, and, and I don't think we, we, I know we talked about it a little bit, but looking at the capital projects and, you know, I'm looking at the library roof and I think that's something that needs to be done. I'm looking at the access study and think that that's either off the table for the, for the Fort Banks or it needs to be cut back drastically. I look at the um, water heater for the uh, Cummings, I think, and I think that has to be done. I look at the technology from the, for the Chromebooks and that's not going to be done because it's going to be given by COVID. And I look at the beach study at 32.5 and not sure if we can adjust that. My, my whole purpose with the capital plan is if we are considering potentially looking at some money from the schools, I think I agree with, and I don't know if it was Bill or, or maybe Bob at the beginning, but you know, I'm not happy about, it, and I'm not in agreement with taking 750,000 out because I think it does have a negative impact. I think the more we touch that money, the more chance we have of lowering our bond rating and, and costing the town a lot of potential money. But I do think if you look at projects like the access road and which is $56,000. Now maybe, it, and that's coming from capital stabilization. And you also have money that he has coming from pilot money, which is the extra money from the MWRA, I guess. For example, the beach study in the Chromebooks, I think we might be able to, you know, potentially in the police cruiser is another 47,000. So those three items from the pilot money are roughly 110,000. If we were to move if we, if we felt necessary, I suggested like the library roof needs to be done, um, move that money into the pilot money. Now you're taking less money from capital stabilization. So, because we're not only taking 100, uh, they're not only recommending 750 for capital stabilization, they're really recommending, I don't know the exact number, like 900 because they're taking some of the money to do capital projects. So, I, I believe if I'm if I'm reading that correctly, which I think I am, and um, you know it's 150,000 from capital stabilization, 150,000 from the pilot program, and 50,000 from building stabilization. I'm not, I'm yeah, not even. Can I cut in on this? Yeah, topic? sure. On the capital, uh, the beach study, and the uh, what was the other one? For the oh the pilot? Chromebooks, the Chromebooks. Yep. They are going to be funded, but not by the sources that are shown in the, in the- Because uh, of, oh, right. So they're finding other sources for that. So that reduces the use of whatever that was the capital stabilization. Or that the was the pilot money. Okay. So well, the, the, what did you say? The beach study and the technology that was coming from pilot funding. I so not that. from stabilization. Right. That pilot funding has now gone back into the revenues to be used for the general budget. So that's okay. a lot of this pilot, which has been used to fund the, you know, is used to fund the uh, town budget, except for that new money was going toward capital. Now they're bringing that back into the-, uh, the Including budget. the cruiser? No, no, cruiser's no. Cruiser's fine. They made adjustments to the beach in the uh, Chromebooks and found separate right. ways, other ways to fund it that freed up that pilot money to be going, used in the budget, the general budget. The, well, uh, I, and there was one other. Um, well, there was the cruiser, the access road study, uh, the water heater I think is needed, but what, what I'm trying to say is if we could, well, I guess that they're using that money now in, in the budget, so. Well, <laughs> you're still funding those other items. Um, but, they, well, but they haven't this, identified the source of the funding. I, well, I mean, they, for which one? For the cruiser? Yeah. If you could go, I'm trying to find it here where the capital plan is in the book, but. Um, if, in the, I'm sorry, Jan. Yeah, if, if I may, what, what I'm seeing between the budget that was originally sent and Anna's memo is that. 53,000 the pilot was being used to fund technology for the school department, beach study, sidewalk repair, and new police cruiser. And Is that what, the original budget, Jen? That's the original budget. What Anna's memo says is Chromebooks and beach study via other funding. Right. right. So I'm assuming that what that means is that 
they are taking that money from the capital budget and moving it back to the general fund. No, they're I, taking. No, it's staying in the capital fund. It's being funded by sources other than the pilot. Correct. So that means that there's a total of fifty-two thousand from the pilot that's available to go back to the general fund. Correct. And that's and they did that in that exhibit. That right. Right. Stuff. Exactly. So and that's part that. of the new budget to make up the one point two. Correct. Right. Well, but, getting, the intention is to fund those items, but just with the different sources of revenue. Well, I think the Chromebooks are being funded by COVID money. I'm not sure the beach study where that. Yeah, I'm not sure about that either. If it is either. So they did and, make those adjustments. Okay, and the capital stabilization original budget. Yep. That's had the, the library roof, the Fort Bank, the access road, and the school water heater. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that has been adjusted. No. 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 Uh, that is something we can, can talk about if we want to talk about the Ford Bank study. Correct. Which is 56,500. Right. Okay. I guess that's yeah. what, yeah, I can't read this right. It's too small. <laughs> I know, I've tried to. And, and that's out of capital stabilization. Yeah. Correct. Right. So if, if we make a recommendation to not do that, it would basically just mean less coming from the capital stabilization fund at this point. Right. Right. Correct. I, the I got a question, um, and I don't know, throwing it out there. I know they adjusted a lot of the fuel costs, and I noticed they didn't adjust the heating costs um, in some of the departments. Uh, they kept them level funded with last year. And I'm wondering if that's just a, another place that could be looked at. Um, also, the fuel costs. They did take 15000 out, but fuel cost is down almost a third uh, of what it was last year and it's pretty consistent and it has been. So I may get a little spike, but I think they could have cut a little bit more in there too. I agree, they cut 12% out of that budget and I think fuel costs on average are down about 31%. And I'm looking, you know, I'm looking at a potential money from budget and, and I had put an additional 10,000 from that, which would rounded down to a 20% total cut, which is still well below the 31% cut that we've seen in fuel cost reduction. Yeah. And there was no, no, uh, it was level funded from the heating. So I'm sure heating costs are gonna be down also. Uh, so it was level funded with last year and most of the departments. I, I agree, I agree. And I'm also still looking at vehicle maintenance, which Again, they didn't touch, it was at 40,000, which was level funded from last year. And I know Steve's argument is that it was never funded properly because the obviously obvious thought would be, we've just got so many new pieces of equipment that the vehicle maintenance should be lowered. I think, I think that the argument for them is that it was never properly funded, so now it's adequate, um, you know. Right. And if you did take, and, and again, we haven't, decided, but if the planner did go off this budget and went to next year, then I would also ask for 7,500 to be taken out of group insurance, which would have covered that plan. Well, do you know that's in there, I guess? I think they would have to. I mean, you have to assume somebody's going to take it. I think that's where they always, you know, I think they do put people in there and that's how they always end up over. Well, what's, I the think GI, what's the GIC budget? Um, what is it again on page seven? Um, GIC budget reduction. What is that? Isn't that health insurance? Yeah, but I think it's from the school department school only. Side. And I think it's okay. a nominal, I think it's a nominal reduction. Okay. All right. I think. I'll look. Now, can I ask a question? What was, what's the, and I'm not saying these are good or bad things. I'm just asking, what is the, alternative use for these funds from all these different line items if you, if you well, decide to recommend that we not less money they'd have to take out of the stabilization well it's one or the other it's i mean in my viewpoint it's money that could go to the schools and and you know and, and rich is saying less money out of stabilization i'm just trying to find a way to i do not you know it kills me to take more money out of stabilization. That's why I'm looking to, you know, if we, you know, if we decided to nix the access road, 
because that's coming out of stabilization. That's 56,000. We could maintain the same um, outage that they're looking at for stabilization, but have it repurposed in a different way. Um, you know, but even with the, I looked at the grants office, the small amount for group insurance from the plant, I mean, the planner, the small amount of group insurance from the planner, a small deduction, a $10,000 deduction in fuel, a 5,000 from maintenance for vehicles, which is 70,000. And then I looked at the 56,000 from the access study, which is like 125, that the budget would basically, I mean, it would stay the same, those departments would be changed, but the amount of money going out of stabilization would still be the same. Um, I'm, I'm trying, and I know, I, I know Bill's against it, and I know Tracy's against it, but I'm just looking, you know, I could say I want to give the schools 200. If I can't find a place to do it, then it's stupid for me to even ask for it. But, and, I, and I really don't want to increase the money taken out of stabilization. Um, you know, I think, again, it's $900,000. It's a lot of money. Um, but again, I, I, you know, it's raining, I guess. It's a rainy day fund. It's raining out. But um, I just don't see how that's not going to negatively impact the town. Uh, Any other thoughts on anything else we or on these comments thus far? Are we going to consider um, giving other departments that ask for increases in money Anything or is everything, um, Jim, do you think everything should go to the schools? I mean, we're we talking like, you know, the veterans office, the HR department, they wanted pretty small amounts. Yep, the veterans department actually is cut in the budget a little bit, right? Like 5,000 in her revision, I think from 100 to 95. Um, I'm, I'm, hoping to, I'm hoping really that as far as health we we feel comfortable that they are going to fund that through covid and i also hope that they are going to fund some sort of help to um to building uh, allegies department there yeah. inspectional, inspectional services. services um i do think that there's a, a good argument to be made for tracy for for human resources and you know and i think i think Less of an argument for veterans agents and the only, uh, do you mean in salary adjustment, Tracy, or just in the budget? Was that what Rose was asking yeah. for? Yeah. Yeah, salary adjustments, I have a real, I, I you know, not in saying time, it's I, not well-deserved. It's you. very hard to argue with a salary increase. And I, I do I think you. that that, de you. that department is something that you can, you know, take another five or 10 because the veterans are going to be paid. If we're yeah. short or not, they're going to get their money. So it's, I don't want to compare it to a, rain, to a snow and ice budget, but they're yeah, going to be repaid regardless. But um, it's, I think it's really hard to argue for a raise for anybody right now. I agree. Um, so yeah. that's, you know, I, I would definitely agree that, that Meredith deserves help some way, shape or form, and they've promised us that that's going to happen. But I think that um, Austin was saying last night that if we budget for that, that the chance of them getting it from COVID money it's, would go down. Right. So it's better not to budget for that particularly. Right. Same but with maybe in special services. That. But what about the increase in work, you know, the um, exponential increase in work for HR due to the um, unemployment? Um, There's no one getting laid off yet. But that, sure. doesn't, that doesn't matter because it, it, if you have people that previously worked for the town and are someplace else, you know, work for the town in the past couple of years and they're someplace else and they get laid off, so they have it to comes do back to the town. Yeah. There's been multiple claims put in already, mostly through the schools, and a lot of them have gotten rejected because, you know, Tracy's done, a, a, they've done a really good job and they've caught certain instances where, you know, there was, what was that, Karen and Bar like 10 years ago, they found out that there were people collecting unemployment that had no don't, right haven't to haven't worked for us for a long time. So yeah. I think they're right. doing a really good job with that. Um, but she does have, not that she has, does she have two full-timers is... Um, I think so. I think it's her and... Yeah, um, Kristen's full-time. I know it's Christine, yeah. but I don't know if she was full-time. No, she's she full-time. She's yeah. full-time. So that is two full-time. And the school full has their own, right? The school is doing it on their own. They don't have a person. Oh, they don't have anybody? Yeah. Can I just so, jump in here on this? Um, I'm not sure it's our responsibility as a finance commission to be suggesting changes in salaries that are set up by HR and by the town. 
I think that if people really feel that they should be getting more or their staff should be getting more, that's something they should be discussing with the town manager, the HR director, or whatever the proper course is, and those funds should be made available. But I, and I hear you, I feel that these people do good work, um, but I'm not sure it's our responsibility or our place to be giving out raises. We can recommend okay. two I well, I hear you, Bob. That, that makes sense. I was just, this is, again, this is my first time around. And I thought that that was the, that was why they were coming to us and speaking to us. Yeah, no, and they are. They're looking for our support, I guess. I mean, we could put in something in a narrative that we think that these departments should be considered for increases or something. But I don't think we should actually go into the budget. And Got it. Money Got it. That makes sense. Sure. We'll accomplish that. The other thing too, Tracy, um, you missed last year when Rose came and presented her budget to us. Um, it was all about her salary last year. And uh, she basically started out saying, she could be working part-time somewhere else and be making as much if not more money than we're paying her. Um, but she's still here. So- uh, And what. she did get an increase. She got a raise. She, got she did get an increase last year. And she okay. looks like there's a $5,000 increase in personnel this year as well. So right. hopefully she's getting, I think she does a wonderful job and hopefully she's getting recognized for that. But um, you know, when when you take a job and there's a salary, you accept that, and she's been obviously fighting to increase it, and that's fine too. But, good to uh, know the history, and uh, good yeah. to know what our actual mission is. And I, yeah. my apologies for not. Oh, being there's not, no, and I'm not sure everybody agrees with me either. But I'm just thinking that <laughs> you know, if we wanted to, we could be trying to get everybody raises. And, yeah. And I, we did have a study. The town did pay for a study a couple of years ago to have an individual come in to look at every department head to see if they were fairly paid. And everything was found to be fairly paid except for two positions. Uh, one of them was human resources, and that was an adjustment made. And the other one at the time was the assistant town manager, which was just given that title to help them try to find a job and they ended up getting a raise because of the title. So that we, did we ended up getting company. stuck with a position. Well, we did pay for a company to come in to do an evaluation of all the department head salaries. And they did find two, like I said, human resource and assistant town manager, which they did adjust. You know, I find interesting, this is a little bit off the, <laughs> off of the discussion, but um, Anna was given the assistant town manager position um, without adjustment, adjustment in her salary, so. Right, yeah. Maybe that reflects. Well, oh, that's common. That's a resume change or, or reflects a potential change in leadership. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got another question. Uh, and I know I'm going light on them and I don't know if I should be doing that, you know, but this uh, improvements to land, Jimmy, do you know anything about that? It's in the DPW budget. It's, it's uh, 40,000. Then they have another one, public infrastructure, supplies and that's 85,000. I was just curious to what that stuff is, is for. Uh, I, I know just, we had Steve there. I probably should have asked him. But. I'm just looking for it now. And I think public infrastructure supplies are supplies for things like repairing roads and, and you know, I, I'm not sure whether it's in water and sewer, but it would be, okay. and, and that number I think is about what the, it typically is for those kinds of supplies. Okay, because because then there's another one: general repairs and maintenance supplies, groundskeeping materials. Um, I was just curious because I was wondering. I mean, it's it's maintained over three years, so yeah, uh, it has maintained. I think from like well, it went from sixty eight to one hundred and twenty one to ninety six, and now to eighty five. Yeah, and I, I think it's his budget is usually, I think DPW budget is usually pretty good. Okay. In term, you know. What budget was that, Rich? Was that the, uh, the Department of Public Works? It's a DPW budget. Yeah, and then there's repair and maintenance to uh, infrastructure, which is another eighty thousand. That's what I think caught me. There was two of them, you know. And have they been there for years? Uh, yeah, it looks like they've been funded. Uh, one went up, oh, it was balanced this year as, as to last year. And so repair to, maintenance of infrastructure has gone from 70 to 97 to 155 and now right. back to 80. 
um, you know, was 70 last year, went back to 80. And I think some of them, they're just changing where they're funding them from. Yeah. Probably. I think yeah, one thing we one, can- One's we, repair and maintenance of infrastructure and the other one's public infrastructure supplies. Right. Yeah. And improvements to land. I just, you know, mm. not much land to improve. I think maybe to, to take one thing off Bob's list, I, I, I would be willing to say that I would be willing to keep, um, if, if everybody agrees, um, in his accounts payable clerk, I would be willing to keep that, you know, take that off the table and keep that on the budget if there seems to be an inclination to do that and we could stop, you know, we could take that off the discussion board. Yeah, I'm totally in favor of keeping that. Bill? Yeah, I would vote for that. I would vote for that. Okay, so what? So I think we've agreed on one thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, it's going to be a long night. <laughs> well, we have another. We got Monday. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, we definitely have to Monday. Uh, well, why don't we go back to um, the issue we talked about the other night that we've already started type of? It's a, kind of the big issue is whether or not we want to recommend that the town council, because of the way this is set, um, we can't take the money out of the um, reserve funds itself, recommend that the council add $200,000 to the school budget utilizing stabilization account money. Um, that, that's a big number. And it's, uh, I think it's one that there's, there's, there's our earlier discussion, there's several people that don't necessarily agree with it. So why don't we go decide, make a decision on that? If you, is that okay? I'm okay with the number. I'm not okay with it coming from stabilization. I think that's why you have to maybe talk about the planner first and see where that shapes out. If there's a, if there's a majority that feels the planner stays in or whatever, then that's off the table too. And um, I mean, I think there's also, and not that I ever want to touch this, but there's the town council stabilization, which is a hundred grand, which is not used for the town council, is it's used to usually for rodent repair or whatever. There's always money that comes out of it from specific motions made from the CFO during the year. Um, I think that's definitely something that, you know, you, you, I hate to do it, but potentially if we're looking for 25 grand, you could do that. Um, I mean, I'm all for giving the schools the 200, but I'm not necessarily agreed to where it would come from. I don't want to come from stabilization. I guess. Was, were they able to chip it down at all, Jim? Do you know? I think they uh, have chipped the it down from 700 to 200. Okay. All right. You know what I mean? I think they have chipped down be between the, inf the IT support that we've given and the athletic vans from the schools and some of the money, like um, I think Bill was saying earlier that they have saved money, absolutely, with transportation from spring sports and I'm sure some utility lines that they're able to prepay this year because of COVID. They're able to prepay some of the costs that they would have next year. So I think with all that, they have whittled it down to that 200. Now, does 200 really mean 100? I don't know. You know, like you always ask for more than what you really need. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I didn't realize it was 700. I thought it was 500. Well, they had said 1.5 and change was level serviced and we gave them 800. So it's basically a 700,000, you, you know, if you took them literally, it's 700,000 for them to be level serviced. And if 85% of their budget is payroll, that's an awful lot of people. Um, now, I think through some of the stuff that we've done and the SBAC has done and just being closed is done, I think they've whittled that down to 200. So, you, you know, maybe you're talking about, you know, five or six positions. I don't know what that number is. Okay, well, then why don't we do this? And why don't we talk about yeah, other like, yep, go ahead. amendments that we might want to recommend, and then we'll circle back to this. So having said that, I guess the other big point is the uh, planner position. Want to start with that? I think that would be good. Okay. Um, I don't know if we need to have anybody like to add to that. You know how some people feel. Anybody like to? Well, I mean, as as much as I would like to see uh, 
a plan there happen. And um, I think it's it's really important that we do it. And, uh, um, you know, I, I like the compromise that you came up with the other night, uh, Bob, which was the 90-day uh, mm -hmm. uh, budget. Uh, and I think that was a good alternative to totally giving the whole amount, you know, back and, and not having any uh, hope or aspirations of getting someone this year. Okay, anybody else have a thought? I'd like to keep the money there. Um, even if we're not gonna hire somebody, uh, I think it's important to have money there to cover the expenses for um, uh, consultants and people that we bring in to do those planning um, or have those planning responsibilities if we're not having an on-site planner. We've talked about, you know, not having an on, if not having an on-site planner, we would need somebody um, either regionally or um, from some fund to be able to pay people that are doing planning activities. So I think it's important, you know, for, for example, the person that we're bringing in currently to talk to us about and to help us plan for the middle school project, which is BHB, and we're already using them, we're already um, working with that planner or working with that consultant to help us do that planning work. Doesn't the town manager have something in his budget for those things? Wasn't that his argument last year when we tried to take something away from him? He does. He has $10,000 for, um, what do you call them? Um, <laughs> people, kids from school. Jesus, I'm getting old. Interns. Interns. There we go. I don't think that's going to cover the, the planning consultants we need, especially for the middle school. No, site. it's not. No, no. If, it if, won't. if we use them. It, it certainly won't. But, but to that point, if, if he did need that money for that, then he wouldn't have money to hire a planner to begin with. If that, you know, there well, still is. Or, right? If we had a planner, somebody could, if we had somebody in place, they could help us with that, that job. But I think Karen has said, and I agree, that there still is money in that account if we were to remove the planner. Karen? Yep, there is. There's 23000 from the conservation agent and there's 15000 that's in the budget. So there is $38,000 there. Which I think is adequate. To and that's not, not tangent salary either. Tangent salary is altogether separate. Right. I think that might cover one consultant for one project, maybe, um, but no other projects. That's not a lot of money. Just either 200000 It's all relative. It yeah. is. It is. It is. It is our it is. I, I'm in favor of eliminating that position until July 1st, but obviously that's one vote. And I think, I think Rich said, did Rich say March 1st? And Tracy said July 1st? Well, no, July. I didn't say July 1st. I, I'm sorry, January 1st, January 1st. Yeah. No, he was talking, if he was saying push, the, the recommendation now is to fund it for half a year, which would be. Right, uh, January, January 1st. And, Rich's suggestion was to fund it for only three months, which would be working back like in June, March 1st, May, April 1st, April 1st, April, yeah. 1st. April, May, June. Yeah. So it'd be a compromise, I guess, if you will. So Rich's, you know, suggestion is to take, to cut that line by 23,750. Right. Okay. Um, I'm in favor of just eliminating it until uh, July. July 1st. I'm April 1st, Bob. You're April 1st, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm April 1st too. I, I, I think that there's significant risk to the town with all of these things that are going on if we don't have some money there. And let's be honest, if we're recommending that it not be filled until April, that gives plenty of time to redirect it, but we're making the commitment that we believe that that is a position that should be filled. And we're creating at least a placeholder for it, even if nothing happens with it in the current fiscal year. And come April 1st, when the town manager needs Twenty-two thousand dollars for something. He's going to come to the council, to the town council, and say, "I yep. want this twenty-three seven fifty. So I yep. don't agree. If you want to have a, a place, just put a dollar amount in there, one dollar, 
and hold it till July 1st of next year. Uh, you, could do, you, could, you could do that too. How do we fund it then? Well, that's, that's and, and Jen, literally, I, Jen, I was with Jen, I was turning and gonna be with Jen 100%. And my only thought was, and I know, I'm not saying we don't need it, but by hiring April 1st, we have, like Jen's saying, we have committed to that position. So now that's probably a hundred and something thousand next year that we've already committed to the budget. You're right. not gonna fire somebody or let them go after three months. So now you're committing another hundred grand to the budget somehow, some way, and we have no idea what the, you know, they're talking about guesses now. I think Jen would even agree with me that we have no idea what next budget's gonna look like. Absolutely, and I feel the same way about the schools. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, we're already $750,000 in the hole as far as next year's budget is concerned. Was uh, April 1st, was that what Rich referred to as Bob's compromise on this? Yes. Yes. I would vote for that. Well, why don't we do that? Why don't somebody make a motion to that effect? I'll make that motion. And then we'll see how it goes. All right. Well, Rich. Second. I'll second it. I'm just writing this down. Barbara's not here. I'm trying to take notes. <laughs> Um, okay, so basically the motion is to defer hiring a planner until April 1st of 2021 and to reduce the amount recommended by the town manager from 47.5 to 23,750. And there okay. should be another part to that motion to follow on to Jim's comment about the fringe benefits. That should be reduced by uh, $3,750. Right, and, and we could give you the, uh, for the motion anyway, I'll give you the line items, Bob, if you want them. The planner's permanent employee line is 511100. And, and the group insurance for the town line is 517510. Okay, and that was how much money, three? 3750 if 100% was 7500. Okay. Now, the only thing with this motion, usually we would have where it's going to, do you want to just save the allotted the amount of money now and then decide where it's going to? Yeah, I, I think I think so. Um, okay. The only other thing that we could do with it is give it the town council reserve. Oh, for a placeholder or something. Yeah. yeah, but but why don't why don't we see what we come up with? Okay. In total. Okay, so uh, we've got what are the two numbers again? Twenty. So there's a motion to reduce two lines, line 511100 by 23,750. Okay. And to reduce line 517510 by $3,750. Okay. Okay, so the motion then would be to defer hiring the town planner until August 1st, 2021. And reducing line item five one one zero zero town planner salary from tw from forty seven five hundred to twenty three seven fifty, and to reduce the GIC benefits to three thousand seven fifty, line item five one seven five one zero. And I'll give you that total in one second. With that twenty seven five. No, the um the new total oh, oh, for oh, oh. benefits. So that line, the new line total for the for the group insurance town would be one million six hundred fifty three thousand two eighty five. And so that's the town. So I guess you would reduce that line by thirty seven fifty to the amount one six five three two eight five. Okay. 
Okay. So, all those in favor of the, making these adjustments in the planner position say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Yeah. All right. I do have to do a roll call here, I guess. Just <laughs> let me get the let me just get the names down here. So. Mm -hmm. Barbara here. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Okay, Tracy? No. No. Uh, Bob, yes. Rich? Yes. Mike? You convinced me, yes. Okay. Jan? Yes. Brent? Yes. Jim? No. Bill? Uh, me, Bill's yes. Well, yes, okay. Karen? No. So we have three no's and one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. So it passes six to three. So, they, so that's, a, a, you know, a um, pool. The pool right now is $27,500. So, yes, yeah, so we have 27500 Available funds. Okay. I'll make another motion if you'd like to discuss. Mm -hmm. I'd make a motion that we uh, reduce the vehicular fuel line item five four eight one five four eight one zero zero. Um, by $10,000, which would make it an even $100,000, uh, which is a 20% reduction from the original line. Whose line, whose budget is that in, Jim? That's in DPW. Thank you. Which one was it, Jim? I'm sorry. The was that, is that DPW or is that shared expenses? Oh, for I, the, uh, yeah, shared ex I think it is shared expenses. Shared expenses. Um, it is, uh, yeah, shared expenses. Yeah, shared expenses. Yeah. So shared expenses line five four eight one zero zero uh, from one hundred and ten, which is the um, adjusted number, to one hundred. That's uh, vehicular fuel. Fuel? Yes. Hmm. I'm I'm looking at a number that says 125. That was the original budget in the in the budget. That was the original number. See, uh, oh, and her, and then, then the she adjusted it down to yeah, one yeah, yeah. ten, yeah. yeah. which was a twelve percent reduction. This would be a twenty percent reduction, which is still probably ample money because it's Roughly 31% off. Yeah, okay, I, I, I get it. Jim, where are you seeing the reduction? Is that on that spreadsheet? It's, you it's on her uh, spreadsheet, yeah. If you look at, uh, is it under shared? It's, it's under, under it's on the page expenses. seven, yeah, line item reduction. She actually doesn't say what account that's coming from. I thought she, uh, um, page seven you said, Jan? Yeah, it just says fuel savings. Oh, no, no I saw the, uh, on the revised budget. It's, uh, in, uh, on the um, Excel sheet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. it's uh, uh, account, it looks like 425 is shared expenses. Shared expenses, vehicular oh, fuel. I it. Okay. it says line item 548100, originally yep. 125. She's recommending 110, which okay. would have been a $15,000 reduction. I'm asking for it to be the 100. I'm not sure what page this is. is it? It's well in that in the um, it's the next to the last page if you use search from the last if you use the revised one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Halfway seven. down the sheet. Yeah. Eight. 
It's line, it's page eight on her spreadsheet. Oh, I'm going to mark the pages, I guess. Huh? It's near the, um, it's the like fifth from the bottom on page eight. Fifth from the top on mine. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm looking on the computer. If it's right after DPW and snow and ice. So if you see any Department of Public Works adjustments. If you look at the sheets that she gave us, it's page five. Okay. And it's about midway down. And, and it it's is right after, right after snow and ice and above cemetery. Um, no, it's property insurance. Oh, wow. This is, oh, yeah. I mean the lines, but I'm saying the grouping. Yeah. Oh, it's right yes, above yes, property yes, insurance yes, below cell phone. Yes. But it is highlighted on my sheet. Yes. Yeah, they made a cut. So their original yep. budget was 125. They adjusted it to 110, which right. is which 15. Is, which is a 12% reduction. Yep. And now we're going to decrease it by another 10. I'm, I'm making a motion to decrease it another 10,000, which would be a 20% reduction off the original line. But what is uh, this year? It's 130. 130. No, yeah. it's 125 in the budget. No, no, I'm, I'm looking at no. the current year, the, the budget for fiscal the year. Oh, yes, 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 it's 130. 130. And if, and if you just did a 30% reduction off 130, that would bring it down to 89,000, I think. Yeah, but I'm just looking at the actuals. I know that the cost of fuel has gone down, but it may, you know, may go up again. Right. We've spent 120, 119, 164, 120. And now we're talking about getting down to what? Um, 100. 100,000. 100, we don't have an annual contract for that, do we? We do not. Okay. We do get a price for a period of time, but it's not like a contract. We'll get like a three month bid or whatever it is. You know, I think you can do the same with some of the heating costs, Jim, on some of the budget. Oh, I, th I think you could, uh, you know especially on the school side, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's one of the adjustments they already made. But yeah, on the, on the town side, you could, but, you know. It, you know, the majority of the heating comes from the schools. You know, it's their budget that takes, a, you know, the brunt. Some schools are gas. Um, they're all the gas schools, now. They're all, they're all gas, gas now, yeah. Um, but I don't think there's as much heating in the in the town budgets, I mean, town hall, the library, the, the fire station, police station. I don't think it's, there's as much. Do I think there's probably some savings there? There probably is. There probably also isn't electricity because of the solar, which they've never, you know, we've had it for over three years now and they've never adjusted a line for it. And we know that there's credits. Um, but I don't think you're talking about a lot of money to potentially cut. But we do have a, I did make a motion here. I don't know if anybody seconded it or not. Second. Oh, second. second. So the motion is to reduce line item for shared vehicular cost by $10,000 from 110 to 100,000. Is that correct? correct? Correct. Correct. And Jim's motion, Karen, second. Any discussion? My only concern is that I'm wondering, just looking at the prior three or four years, if we're not cutting it too thin, my, my reservation. Well, gas was up to almost $3 a gallon, though, in some spots. You yeah. know, two seventy five, And now what is down to, what, about one thirty five. Well, I think they're paying, I think for this, they're paying like 180 or 170 I don't think it's down that low for them for... But I think it's substantially lower than it's been in the past. Right. Yeah, you're right. It's about a third lower than, than it has yeah. been. I'm just, again, we don't know where it's going. No, no we don't know we where don't. it's going. We don't, we don't know much of anything in this. Budget. No, we're just taking a stab at everything here, Bob. Yeah, I mean, it's a reasonably small amount of money that if it turns out they need more, they'll find a place to take it from. It's also a line item that they have never asked for more. So I'm assuming right. that means that it's always a line item that they have a little bit left. 
Right. Okay. All right, then. We'll take a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Ayes have it. I was using. That's 37,500. I'd make another quick motion on vehicular maintenance and maybe just a discussion. It, it's that $40,000 number. And it's, you know, it, it's, it's been consistent, but, and we've had a, a very aging fleet to say the least, you know, with thanks to some help from the state, we had $2 million and have bought a, an awful lot of new equipment. And I think their argument is that it's never been fully funded. Not sure. I, I wouldn't be, thinking it would be more than five or 10,000 that we could even potentially take. If it's not even worth a discussion, that's fine. We can move to the next thing. I guess my thought on that is that we haven't been maintaining our vehicles. We had a horrible fleet. We're lucky now we have a, a new fleet, uh, but I would not want to fool around with vehicle maintenance. I think that's something that we want them to do. And I don't know if it, it was that we haven't been maintaining them. We must have been maintaining them if it's such an older fleet. We haven't been replacing them is what the problem's been. So, I mean, the fleet is pretty beat up uh, for, for its age, but we've been maintaining it because we wouldn't have a fleet if we didn't. That's a so, good point. <laughs> well, DPW you know? got quite a, quite a bit of new vehicle and machinery. And right. That's why I think Jim says we can maybe cut 10 grand out of it. I don't know, how much were you thinking, Jim? I was thinking 10, but I, I do agree with, but like we always talk about, we build a new school and then the first thing we cut is maintenance. I, and, and I don't want to use that approach. I'm just saying, I do agree with Rich that if we've had vehicles for 15, 20 years, we must be doing a pretty good job, you know, paper and pencil or whatever, glue and whatever, that, that, however the hell we're maintaining them. I think we are maintaining them. I would think that they would require less. And as, and as much as I'm making a motion and thinking 10 grand or wanting to discuss it, I do agree that it, I kind of agree with Bob that it shows a bad precedent. We, we want to be able to maintain the fleet. So I, I don't know where I am here. I'm just looking at something that just popped out. And when you get 18 new vehicles, you would think that it's going to cost you less to repair. You're going to have, you're not going to have as many, whatever the starters or transmissions or whatever go that you would have in an aging fleet. I think you're still going to do the oil and filters and all those changes, all those yearly maintenance, but you're not going to have the extraordinary maintenance that they would have with, with an aging fleet. I just strongly the other way. I feel we need to maintain the new fleet yeah. and, and, and also any older cars and vehicles we still have. And it would be, you know, when I look back and I see where even critical departments for not maintaining things, whether it's this, this new school building or it's a fleet, and that's when they had the money and they didn't use it. Now I'm saying, that's well, not the fun thing. I, I think it's inappropriate, short-sighted. And we'll come back to budget, if not, not this year, in several years. So I would keep the budget on this one the same. Does everybody else feel the same way? We could just move on or no? Well, they, they raised it. If I'm looking at this properly, they raised it 10 grand from last year. Oh, they did? I didn't even see that. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, wait, wait. I'm looking at line 287 in the spreadsheet, vehicle maintenance supplies. Department no, 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 no. This is, this is uh, 420. 420, okay. Um, it's a uh, light item, uh, 543, 700, 40 grand. It's balanced from last year, but it went up the year before. It went up tw uh, 20 grand because it was 10. It was 30, 10, and then, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at something different because line 420 on the spreadsheet the employee benefits. So, uh, yeah, it's not the line. It, so right before the department, it's the department, it's, it's got numbers 420. So it's Department of Public Works. Uh, the, the, the line is, the uh, line item is 543700. Okay, hold on a second. Right, it's vehicle maintenance. It was 28,000 and then it went to 41,000 
and then it went to fifty eight thousand. Yeah, right. And then it went. It was budgeted at thirty thousand last year, and they were asking for a ten thousand dollar increase. That's Adjustment. what I'm looking at. Right. Yeah, and that's what they got. Right. Oh, so they're so getting they're... an increase and eighteen new vehicles, which is half the fleet too, right? Right, which makes you think that at at least they we're just trying to level fund them, and we think that's being fair that they'd still be able to maintain it. Well, I'm I'm saying I can't speak for anybody. With twenty new vehicles, right? Yeah, I was inclined to um, not be for a reduction in that when I thought it was level funded, but um, I think an increase after you know turning over half the fleet does seem. Um, a place where we should uh, make a comment. Yep, yep. I, I agree with that. Okay. And um, I understand that, you know, and I hate to argue against myself, but I understand that that could be a line item that's always been short and we're looking, you know, they're looking to up it like we've done with snow and ice when it was 40 grand years ago and now it's up to 130 or whatever it is. but. But again, DPW very rarely, if ever, comes to the council for extra money um, for any line items. And that doesn't mean we should pick on Steve for, either, you know, for doing a good job or whatever. But I think Could to we have a, um, what is that, a 33% increase on a line item in this type of year after you've increased your fleet by 50% with new vehicles, I think that that's hard. I think it's relatively easy to take the 10. Can we just add a note to our um, adjustment that um, although we you know, respect and appreciate the importance of maintenance that uh, we just don't see any reason why you should have an increase when you're updating half your fleet. Yeah, I would, I would have that in the motion. That's mm -hmm. fine with me. So we need, we don't have the motion. So something like oh, yeah, we don't have a motion. So I guess the motion, if we were to make it, if I was to make a motion, it would be to reduce in the DPW budget vehicular maintenance line item five four three seven hundred which is currently forty thousand and reducing it ten thousand to thirty second who's that i'm sorry who's rich. That? rich okay by 10,040 to 30. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So that's a savings of $10,000. 47,500. Okay. Anybody have anything else that you'd like to consider? Well, I mean, I, you know, I didn't get the gist of uh, some of these savings, like from the library and the Council on Aging. Um, if they're not due to be open by phase four, if they're even going to open, um, where the savings were shown in the budget. I don't think they've identified that though, Rich. As you know, their as their furloughed employees. Are we could do you want to see what I'm saying? Yeah. So they're not laying anybody off, but I, I was just thinking maybe in some of the expenses they could have, you know, shaved some off. Like the electricity is six thousand dollars. I mean if you're they're down, you know, 25% uh, of the year. They could have adjusted a little well, bit. Well, if they're gonna, if they're gonna furlough those employees, you could probably just take the both the budgets and cut them in half. Yeah. I mean, it won't be accurate because you're still gonna pay them um, uh, benefits, but it would be damn close. And the I same with the library. library. I think the library is always tricky and I'm assuming with COVID there's some sort of thing that says they can't, but I, you, you know, their whole thing is 
they're supposed to be spending X amount of money to be eligible for whatever amount of grants they get. Um, I'm assuming any cuts would not adversely affect that if they weren't going to be able to be open. I think that's right. Would think so. And it's a very small amount of money that they get. Right. I know. We've said that before that it's like we're, we're saving, we're spending 20 to get 25. Right. Right. But I understand what Rich is saying. I just don't know if, if we don't know for sure, you know, that would be an assumption on our part that they're not opening. I, I think like I even thought uh, when we had a meeting a couple of weeks ago that Parks and Rec wouldn't be open and now it looks like they are going to be open. Yeah. So that has changed. I, I, I would say the senior center would probably be the last thing. Um, I think it'd be great. I think the library is maybe an easier thing to open because I don't think it's ever overly crowded in there and people, and I think it's a great service to provide. So I, I kind of agree with Rich, especially on the senior center. I just don't know if that, that would be assuming something we don't know. Yeah. I guess this whole budget is doing that, but. but yeah, it, but it would, it would really be assuming. Right. It would be basically saying that we want to close the department. Yeah. It and would I be recommending. Should, right. I don't that's, think we should send that signal, but that, that's definitely I think a if that I'm not saying close it, I'm saying adjust it so that it's. Well, uh, I think remember if it doesn't get spent it comes back to the town as free cash <clears throat> so if we don't lose it it's just sitting there say for a year until it comes back to the town the argument is it could be used for other purposes i agree but since we don't know when they're going to open if they're going to open um it's kind of hard to be guessing on what to do but the money will not be lost it's just coming back and perhaps the council into the town manager if they see that this department, for example, is not going to open until September, then it could be appropriate to go in and have them jointly come up with savings that they know they're not going to, for money they're not going to spend. But I don't know that it's, again, appropriate for us to try and guess what may or may not happen. Okay. And right. then we will get it back. It's not lost money. Right. Because it's really not our place either to decide who is and who isn't going to open July 1. Right, right. I know the library has talked about even doing what they call curb service. You know, if, if they allow them to open up, that they'll deliver to the front door. So, you know, of the library, I mean, not the, not the homes, the library. Yeah, I don't think we should touch those. Okay. I, I agree, Jan, I agree. Is there uh, any other issues in the budgets that you want to talk about? Well, I'd like to talk about if we have some, and, and I don't know if it's an estimate or if we would think about cutting it, but to talk about the two capital items, the, the police cruiser and the access road study. The access road study is 56500 and the cruiser is 47000 well, Where um, would the cruiser money come from if it didn't come from this? I'm not saying to, to have another source to fund it. I'm saying, is it a time that we should continue to purchase another vehicle? If we should, that's fine. I understand what you're saying, but I know that we were in such a pickle a few years back with the cruises. Some of them weren't even drivable. No, um, I agree. And no, I'd be willing and, to and just and stop discussion as, with that. No, and as um, the chief has told us in the past, it's all short driving in this town. It isn't like they're driving up to Portsmouth, New Hampshire. You know, they're driving from the station uh, to your house or to my house. It's all short stuff. And I, I hate to, um, to, to, well, I'm gonna say it anyways. I don't think they're as careful about cruises now as they were years ago when they didn't replace them as often as they did. And the other thing is, you know, they're not built the way they used to be either. I mean, uh, you know, you, you can see that in your own car, they're not built the way that they were 15, 25 years ago. So I, I hate to play with cruises. Um, okay. But the, the well, access road- Can we talk about the access road at 56,500? Yeah. Right, definitely. I want to see that off the table completely. I think that should just go back to the stabilization fund. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is there a motion then? I'll, I'll make the motion if nobody wants. I mean, I don't care. 
Which, excuse me, which stabilization fund is that coming from? Capital? I think it came from capital. capital. It is coming from capital stabilization. Capital. Yes. <clears throat> hey, somebody would like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we eliminate the Fort Banks Access Road study of $56,500 from the capital plan um, and capital stabilization. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. What was the number again? 56. Aye. I'm sorry? 565. 565. Okay. Yep. Capital stabilization. And I think again, I may add a note that since we have, since they have found the old study that should be evaluated before any further money yeah. is spent on yeah. new studies. Yeah. Did they find the beach study while they were looking for that one? Do <laughs> 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 one of those. Uh, okay, I am going to take a quick break here. I'll be right back. Uh, please feel free to discuss anything else with. When I get back, if you have any other items to discuss, we'll deal with them. If not, then we can go back and, uh, and make our big picture uh, votes. I think uh, the only other thing is the schools. Okay, I'll be right back. Unless Jim wants to do something about heating. What's the total, Jim, uh, well, so far? Well, this is what I'm, lo I'm looking at. Is, and again, the well, I'm looking at 104000 even right now that we've done. Now, the only thing, which I think is the right thing with the... Um, with the access road, that's not really a line item. It's just lessening the amount coming out of stabilization. So mm -hmm. if we were to, you know, if we were to take 56 out of stabilization to the schools, we're really not increasing our exposure that they had recommended, mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. So, you know, we're at 104,000 now, which again, wherever, it, I, I mean, I would like it to go to the schools, but wherever, it still doesn't get to where they want. And I don't, I mean, you know, I can nickel and dime things to death. I, I think it's kind of pointless. Um, we could go to heating. We could, you know, you could take another 10 from shit expense from, um, from um, uh, medical and, and benefits and stuff. But I think that, you know, they're going to really push us not to do that because there's so much uncertainty. Right. You know, the other thing we don't know is, which is a big number is the insurance for the town, which right. I think she put up 12%. She had been telling us 10% all the time. So can we put it at 10% and save a few thousand there? But we have and no she, idea. She I, I have no idea. 85,000. I'm sorry? 85,000. 85, Above? Yeah. What it was so last what year. was it originally? Like 560? Five, five, I thought it was six something. Oh, it was six something. So that would make more sense. Jim, I thought it was around six ten. I can't find it now. Well, it's like, got to be just shared expenses, right? Um, <coughs> uh, actually. So, Bob, I guess uh, you're back? Yes, I'm back. <laughs> so, what we were discussing is just that we were up to $104,000 okay. um, with 56500 of it just coming, going back to capital stabilization, basically, as of now. Oh, right. And... You know, it, it's still a question of where we want money to go, uh, where everybody wants money to go. I'd like it to go to the schools, but we're still short of the goal I had. But um, we were just discussing, where were we? <laughs> we were looking at insurance. insurance. Yeah, we're looking at the, the, the big concern still is the insurance for the town. I think that Anna had upped it 12% which, I, you know, it's a guess. I have no idea. She had been saying 10% all along that she felt that that was a comfortable number. And then when they did this, they did it to 12. I'm trying to see the line item. Yeah. But, um, I mean, but are we, anyone here close enough to make an opinion as to- No, I, <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> well, you know, I think we can ask Anna, you know, it was 10% all along, now it's 12%. Why is it 12? But I would be 
again, stay of us making a decision as to what that increase could be. Cause that's and I'm not necessarily even saying increase. I mean, it might have to be increased. I think that's just another wild card. I still think okay. which, which I've tried to avoid discussing is unemployment, which I think is underfunded too. Um, I think the closer, if we do end up giving more money to the schools, that lessens the chance of that unemployment number going down. But if they do furlough people, that's unemployment too. That's going to increase the town's unemployment. Um, you know, and I noticed that Anna did take, what did she take? 15,000 out of the yep. group insurance from the school. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which she must feel there's a pretty good cushion there to, cause she never usually wants to do that. And I think she pretty much admitted that that's a source of free cash, but feels uncomfortable doing more because I can't imagine us hiring you know there doesn't seem to be a lot of plans to be hiring new people i think that the you know i think the schools karen correct me if i'm wrong only has two retirees that's what i heard there was a question on a survey but it's not question 100 percent. right which you know they're probably going to have some you know those are pro i'm assuming those are teachers making close to 80 that are probably going to be replaced by teachers making 50 um teachers with more seniority uh, that have been there a while tend to have more family type plans then a newer teacher might be more inclined to have a single plan i don't know um but there might be you know i i know there's going to be pushback if we touched any of those either of those lines am i reading um, this right too on the unemployment um in it's 2020 it's 105 and she went down to 90 this year yep for the schools right for the school yeah and the town was to the town she went up from right. 35 to 50. to 50. so she kind of redeployed it i guess yeah, i see that i see that workman's comp is that not is that an insurance number that she should have an actual number or is that a, a, a line item for cases do you no think idea. that's a workman's comp policy or it's a workman's comp allotment of money? I think it's, I think it's to cover an insurance policy. Right. But Which I'm, not if, sure yeah. when, I'm not sure when the policy is effective and when, you, when they get quotes, just like in the mm -hmm. property insurance. Um, you know, we are not being renewed by Maya right. because of experience. That's a, I was in the insurance brokerage business for 40 years. When you're faced with something like that, you know your premiums are going up. Right. The question is how high? How high? They have a broker working with them. He's supposed to be giving them advice on the spread or what he thinks based on his knowledge of the day-to-day -day market might happen. But you still added, I think, 84, 85,000 to the property insurance. 85, um, yeah. Again, as a function of um, experience and rates, and I don't know that we have it, but there's a possibility you can get into deductible plans and so forth too. But um, so that number right now for this year was penciled in at five hundred and twenty-one thousand and change, and now it's six oh six and change. Yeah, we wouldn't right. touch that. I, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't. I agree. I would not touch that. And I would like to get clarification on the. I think the vocational school, I think, is pretty much a formula that, you know, I think they have an idea how many students. The tech, I think it's a guess. No, they, they say on that first statement we got from the tech, it said six students at 15, oh shoot, Jim, I lost it now, 15 something plus 2,500 for transportation. Right, yeah, but, but then in the budget, doesn't she say this is based on numbers from this year? We don't know what next year is yeah. going to be? Uh, we, we, I, I can't remember now whether it's in the budget book somewhere or we saw it separately, but they, we, their budget for both this book and the Aggie or I, I don't, are, there were letters from both schools right. saying this is what's of charge for this fiscal right. year one. Okay. That's where the numbers came from. And yeah, I know we can't change this number. I, I know they we can't based on enrollment, but at the time, those are the ones that came from the institutions to the town, and that's what they're using the budget. 
the, no, the, what we got for her says six students on 10 119 at 15 259 a student. What came to 91554. Transportation, six times 2,500 is 15,000 for a total of 106554. Okay, and that's the number she has. Yeah, and that's dated May 6th, 2020. Okay. And that was when we got the memo from her too. I'm just finding the that's, email. That's what I'm reading, Jan. Okay. I just, that's what I'm reading, is yep. her memo. Yeah, so and, those numbers are based on what they were given. Okay. And what we knew at the time. Yeah, and then the, the next, yeah, the next one we asked was, was there going to be any sort of a, um, any rebate of any kind because the school's closed? And the answer was no. Yeah. And the other line that, I think we made a comment last year, but do we even discuss regional dispatch or is that just 450 oh, grand please. we're just giving away every year? <laughs> I think the two chiefs are happy with it, so. The, the police and fire chiefs seem to think it works well to the, to the benefit of the town. Uh, I don't see that at all. No. I they both even, said it. They, they seem to like it. Um, what, what's that, 450000 or something like that? Yeah. yeah. My concerns um, going forward have to do with two of the enterprise funds, the um, the um, recreation ferry. and the ferry. Oh. Um, I, I don't know that we, uh, you know, we may want to make comments. I don't think we, I don't want to change their numbers or anything, but I think that somebody in the town manager's office or the council has got to keep an eye on both of those departments because if, if um, you know, if Parks and Recs is going to be open now, that's great. But if their programs are restricted and their fees are restricted, their income is restricted. And if they, same thing with the um, ferry, if they have to reduce their number of passengers per trip um, and reduce the number of trips, problems. Um, in, in Quincy, you know, they, they probably have their own financial problems or issues that just as we do. And if we don't meet their requirements, their money could stop coming in. So, I mean, I hope none of that happens, but I think we, we the town, have got to pay a lot of attention to those two accounts this year or else we will be responsible of using taxpayers' funds to supplement their losses. And uh, I'm, more to... I'm more concerned with the ferry because I think Sean can adjust and adapt a lot easier. All it takes is only a couple of three weeks with minimal passengers on the ferry and we're in the hole never to be able to recover because it's going to be an abbreviated season to begin with. I think with Sean too, that's got, what's going to help Sean is, and I'm guessing, um, is that they're going to have some sort of partnership with um, 21st century maybe because they're not going to be able to do a program in the schools, it doesn't look like. So I think they no. have some sort of, there have been some sort of discussions on possible, you know, joining forces so maybe that helps him also because well, she's relying the, on grants right the, and the ferry right now is what 10 or 11 weeks in the hole right now for this year yeah. which they, they feel see, is... see no revenue at all none i mean i know the only salary that's coming out of that is tangies but still you know you still have insurance i'm sure that they have to pay and do they pay any sort of a fee to, to dock in Boston? I mean, do they have to still honor those that they signed contracts with last fall? Probably, there's certain fixed expenses that even though they're not operating, they have to pay. And, and That's what I mean. Yeah. I mean, when they have the, one, it, Do we pay the captain's um, salaries just to have believe, them on call and no. ready? No. I don't believe so, I don't believe so. I would really hope that while the boat is just sitting in the water, somebody's maintaining it. Because that I don't could know be who, another who's, problem. Who's doing that? I'm just asking. I'm hoping. I, I saw it running today. I went by it, um, and it was up and running. Or it, the engine was on, and there's a guy back there. So we have to pay him then to go down and do that, whoever yeah. that is. So um, now, and one thing, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not seeing the line item right now, but one thing that they took out was the, Hundred and fifty thousand for um, salary contingency, or yes, they did. Was. Yep. So, 
is that to assume that, I mean, can we take that the step further and say, that means that they're probably not going to have a, well, they're either going to agree to a zero, which I, I can't imagine happening, or they're not going to discuss. I'm just wondering where the, where the um, lawyers fees are for that. Is that in the town manager budget? And could those be adjusted if they're not planning on negotiating? Well, I think they have to negotiate if, if the, they can't put off the negotiation because they have to act in good faith. Well, they, that's what I'm saying. I don't think they can act in good faith if they have no money. Yeah. Well, well all they, the, they said was, dependent on results of negotiations, yeah. no appropriation is required until ratification. Okay, so that's fine. I'm just thinking if, I mean, I look at the lawyer's fees all through the budget and it drives me crazy, but... So we're we're at one hundred and four thousand now. The, you know, well, I'd like to get to two hundred. I don't think we're well, going to yeah, do Jim, that. We're not at one hundred and four thousand because it's uh, fifty six thousand five hundred was the capital stabilization. That's not to well, be for the budget. Right. My point is, my you know, I'm thinking of the schools, and my point is, if we were to say to take fifty six thousand out of stabilization to put towards the schools, it wouldn't be increasing the amount they had planned on taking out of stabilization. You know what I mean? The logic? Well, it's a different stabilization from it. If you took- no, yeah. it's, Well, it's capital, right? It's capital instead of general. Yeah, but I'm saying right. we have, we've got 47.5 of funds that are available to be used in the budget. Bob, can I ask you a quick question? Sure. So, and I, maybe I missed this, but what was the genesis of the $200,000 number? Like, where did that, I know, I, I think I remember Karen saying, I'd like to give them 200 and we've all been focusing on 200. Right. Where did that, what's the basis for it? What's the backup for it? Like, where was that, where did that come from? The gist that I got was, if they got the 200,000, they would not be sending out their pink slips on the 15th of um, June, June. Which they're gonna have to do because we're not voting on the budget till the 16th. Till the 16th, yeah. right. So that was just communication to you, Karen, from the superintendent. Jim and I both went to the school committee budget subcommittee meeting. And okay. that was what was discussed. We weren't okay. really part, we, they did acknowledge that we were there and we were able to ask questions if we wanted to. But that was the gist of their conversation. Okay. That that, that two hundred thousand would they would not have to send out pink slips. Okay. So they felt that they've saved close to five hundred thousand in stuff they've already done in savings from not being open and and stuff that the SBAC was able to supply for them for next year and um, you know and in other items and they feel well this is, and again you're right because we're relying on their information and this is why I said at the beginning. Is 200 a real number? Is 200 like yeah. asking for 200, hoping you get 100, and thinking that you can make it do with 100? So we were told that the, they closed the gap from 700,000 to five to 200,000. Okay, but no, I did. No I didn't see it. I mean, in the past, she showed it to us. I did not see it. Right. It was not shared with us. I think also wasn't um, that 200 simply rounding an 800,000 dollar increase to a million dollar increase. Isn't that what that number came from? Well, it, it is, if yeah, you look at it yeah. that way. Yeah. How, how much out of new, new revenues did the school get last year? Oh, well, well over 60%. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but do you, do you remember what the number was? Wasn't it about the same? About 800,000? Yeah. No, because we ended up giving them more money at the council level. At when yeah, we but got then- to the, Wasn't that much though, Jim? Was it a hundred grand? Not even. No, I, uh, no, I think it was one hundred and fifty. Yeah, I think it was. I too. think I think we we voted for eight hundred. I I believe, and the council added one hundred and fifty to it. Let's see. That's your budget in here. Yeah, I'm looking now. They don't have a complete budget in there. No, no, but they might have total numbers given. No, but I'm, I'm going to go back to our, our report. In the book. Their budget, their, 
from 19 actual to 20 actual, it went up $1.2 million. Well, a little less than 1.2 million. Okay. But from fiscal 18 to fiscal 19, see, there's got to be things missing. It went down. Oh, it went down 2.8 million, but that's when we took the benefits out. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, yeah. So right. that's so it's not really apples to apples. Right, and so, they got put back last year, so it's still not apples to apples. No, they, they no. We pay the town pays the benefits. It's not in their budget. Well, that, that's what I mean. It, it came out of their budget right. To, right. to us. So it did from this, but from 19 to 20, it went up one point, roughly 1.2, 1 1.1, 1.95. Call one, two. Maybe. I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. 1,200,000 roughly, 1,150,000. But the, it's not the problem with, but this, it's such a large budget that it gets a disproportionate share of all of the new revenues that come in every year. I haven't even been able to stop and figure out yet what we're looking at is new revenue in our budget, but it was a million, about a million eighty thousand dollars prior to the changes, if I'm not mistaken. Yet they were still getting eight hundred thousand out of the million eighty. Mm -hmm. The rest of the town was getting the balance, roughly three hundred thousand. What this all comes down to is this year they were you know, I guess fortunate in their, in their regard, they settled their contract. If they didn't, we wouldn't even be having this discussion. If they were like every other department in town and didn't have a contract, then we would not be having this discussion. But I recall too that Anna told us in one of the early meetings that because they settled the contract, they needed about 1.2 million of additional yep. funds. To I think the contract out. cost them about 500 and then steps and lanes, which regardless of the contract, they would have been obligated to do. Right. So the steps and lanes cost them about 700,000 a year now. Yeah. So next year, without any raise or anything else, they're at 700 plus 700. Um, yeah, the, and, and you know, like we've talked about too with next year's budget, it's just gonna, it's gonna be even that much worse. You know, they're gonna ask, which is crazy, but they're gonna ask for that much more money to make up. You know, if we were technically 1.5 and we gave them eight, and now next year they're 1.5 and we, so now they're gonna really be looking for 2.2 just to be even on some number right. like that, which is, you know, not gonna even be close to possible. Well, I don't know. I you don't know, know. That, that, that's my concern is that in some respects, it, it almost seems like we're kicking the can down the road because if we're taking one-time money from stabilization to pay, the ongoing expenses, and, and I understand it's absolutely raining, but they're not getting, we, we've not assumed a reduction in the state aid, and we haven't adjusted their budget because of the economic situation or COVID. I mean, are, are we just setting ourselves up to have an even bigger problem next year? Oh, can we not say that? For, you know, we're taking 750000 from stabilization to basically balance the town budget, which right. is one-time money. We're not taking, as of now, we're not technically, I mean, it's all the same pool of money, but we're not yeah. taking any one-time money right now to fund the schools, and we're taking 750000 to fund the town. But the other way you could look at it, Jim, is that we're taking the money from stabilization because we are expecting a hopefully one-time reduction in state aid and one-time reduction in local receipts. I mean, that's the money that we're trying to replace. Yep. We, so hopefully that is only one time, who knows, right? But we're not, if we're expecting that the state aid for chapter 70 is going to be equal and we're, we haven't reduced the amount of money that we would give to them as a result of, of the reduction in the economic situation, it seems like we're keeping them whole relative to our circumstances overall, but the town is where, you know, we're using one-time money for hopefully one-time decrease in revenue. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to think about it from, from all the different angles and, and whether or not we're setting up 
um, improper third order consequences, if you will, and that we're not dealing with. I mean, are we making it more likely that in order to continue to fund the schools, we're going to have to go for a prop two and a half override? I mean, maybe we have to do that anyway, but I think we should think about it from a strategic perspective as well as just, you know, the tactical budget perspective. I'm just I've been hearing this, I've been hearing the two and a half override for two years now, and no one's presented it or come up with a plan to do it or anything. And it's it's always the same people that are saying we need more money for the schools. They said, you know, put in for an override. Let's see, let's see the bill of pulse in the community, and uh, haven't seen anybody really stepping up to do it. So. Um, yeah. You know, I think that if, is if this is. was the normal year, I think the town manager has said over and over and over, he wants an override. He thinks we need an override. I think he would have pushed to get an override. Now, he can't do it. The council has to vote on putting it on a ballot, but he has said over and over. My thought was to Jan's comment, if this was a regular year, which it obviously is not, and we were looking at the budget that was first presented, and if the schools need, you know, if we all agreed that they needed 200 grand, I think we, we could have said, you know what, we've averaged $2 million in free cash. Most of that, a lot of it comes from uh, benefits. Why don't we take 50 from benefits and 100 from this and 100 from that and be done. Now it's just so much difficult. That's the thing that I still can't get gripped on is the free cash thing. If we've averaged 1.7 in free cash over the last four years, and it's actually been closer to two, and Forgetting about the 1.2, they just cut the budget. If this was based on a normal budget, we have, and, and we want it and we need it, but we that by all accounts, we should have about 1.8 extra in the budget. We don't know really, really where it is. It comes from different places, I think. I think some of the places are relatively stable, but so now we're cutting the budget because we think that money coming in is going to be cut, which is fine. Shouldn't we still be thinking we're going to have free cash or no? Free I don't cash. know. For the, uh, for the I'm talking like free cash October 2021. From this current year? Yeah, from this, no, from the next budget, from the budget we're doing now. Do you oh. Like, do you anticipate having zero free cash in October 21? I don't think so. I think there'll still be money. And I think you know, we don't know. I think they know where it is. I think she knows for a fact that, uh, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I think she knows that she's over projecting 250 grand on, on, on medical. And I think she knows they're over projecting 50,000 on heating. And, and I think those are just, and I think she does it as a protection and I don't think it's a bad thing, but I think, I don't think they're thinking we're going to have zero free cash next year. Well, I, I hope so. I, I hope that's the case because we, we do need to, to show that discipline. I think a lot of it comes out of underestimating local receipts. And right, exactly, they, like she said earlier. Yeah, and they've taken a, a lot out of that at, at this point in time. Uh, you know, I mean, sure, we, we wind up with free cash in the town, but regardless of what we wind up being able to budget for the schools, you know, they seem to be able to live with it. Yep, no, you're right. There hasn't been a lot and, of- And if, because of when you're having your meeting to vote on the budget, they have to send out pink slips anyway, have we negated that argument, which made a lot of sense to me, saying that, you know, we, we want to make sure that they don't have to do that because that costs in the unemployment. Right, that's why I wanted the meeting the 15th and, and you know, three people that absolutely promised me they would vote switched and I won't forget it, but it's just for that reason, you could have unemployment pink slips going out that might not have to be, and it could cost the town a lot of money in unemployment because oh. if it goes till July 1st, they're obligated for unemployment. Jim, when do these terminations take effect? They would take effect July 1st, I think. See, I thought they might not take effect until the start of the school year. You know what? I've asked my wife to on that because I'm always confused. I think, and, and she says they get paid through August 30th, I think. Yeah. I think they get paid, Yeah. you know, 
they you you know in the old days teachers would get like six checks on June 30th and that would be their checks. Oh it's God. not because they're getting paid for July and August, but it's because their salary is split into 26 payments basically. Um, my impression was that because she said that if they are not, and again, this is coming from trust in the superintendent, I don't know, but, and she would explain it much better and maybe Karen even knows, but my understanding is if they, they can go on unemployment as of July 1st and they, and they can't hire them back, like they would be obligated for two months worth of unemployment. I can't really explain it better than that. I know it seems not to be maybe accurate, but that's what I was told. Karen, do you have anything? No, that's what, no, that's what I understood, that they, they were obligated for July. I'm not 100% sure on August. Okay. You know, if, if they rehire them in July for August 1st, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure either. Now, I don't know how many people this involves, but I do know that this has happened in the past. And yep. when we've had tough, tough financial times. Um, and then if the money comes, more money becomes available and the budget gets built up, then they hire people back or they hire other people because some of the people that we've given notice to in Winthrop will find jobs elsewhere. Right. Um, and I think that's their concern this year that nobody's really going to be hiring and that's why they think they're going to get stuck with a lot of unemployment claims. I think their thoughts in the past, I mean, they've had years where they literally laid off everybody knowing that they were going to bring people back but didn't know how or when. Mm -hmm. And I think that with, um, you know, it, it was always when, because unemployment is not in their budget, so it really doesn't affect them. <laughs> you know, if they laid off 20 people, I mean, beside the obvious terrible consequences, it doesn't affect them financially because they're not paying the unemployment. Mm -hmm. I think that I'll, I'll try to reach out to Anna tomorrow. I think that's important to know, even though the notices go out, when does the financial obligation to pay them stop and when would they be eligible for unemployment? Mm -hmm. It's 7-1, that's immediate, obviously. If it's 9-1, mm -hmm. there's a two month period to adjust for it, if you will, or, or to hopefully find revenue. And, and you just made a really important point, Jim. It, the unemployment is on the town side, right. but their salary line items, whether they're paying people or not, are still right. there. Yeah. Right. So they're, you know, if they, like, it's always been the old adage that you have to, to get the benefit of laying off one or two people, to get the benefit of two salaries, you have to let go three. Yep. because of the cost of the unemployment. However, in the school side, if they lay off three people and they're making 50,000 a year, they get that whole benefit. Not that it's a benefit, I'm not trying to say it's good to lay off people, but they don't get the negative, they just get the positive. Right, they have additional money in their budget. Right, and right. the town has that much less. Yeah. So if it costs 50,000 to lay off three, normally you'd be saving one salary or whatever it is. Now the town has to pay the other 50 and the, t and the schools are getting the full savings. Not that that's, you know, it's just the way it is. Do we want to re-meet on Monday? We've done a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Do we? All right. Well, I guess, yeah, I think we have to meet again, clearly. Uh, I will, again, I'll try to find out when the, if, for example, the school does not get any additional aid from the, from the budget, if they don't, I'll find out from Anna when the teachers or the personnel who are impacted will begin to uh, lose their money and begin collecting unemployment. Um, if it's not until September, that's one thing. If it's July 1st, that's another thing. But Jim, I guess to get back to, um, I think it might have been Tracy's question. The, uh, the, I, no, I guess, well, whoever asked about the 200000 The discussion we had the other night was to transfer $200,000. At the time, it was from stabilization. Now we can reduce that. Uh, by 47500 which is the savings from the planner and those two other positions or cuts adjustments that we made into the um, town budget. So let's, my math isn't really, 153000 less 500 so 150. 
152,500. 500, yeah. Uh, that would be the amount needed to transfer it to bring the 800, excuse me, to bring the 200 together for right. to add to the school. And that's what the question that is really the big question is, do we want to fund that? Do, do we as a group want to recommend that? We can't fund it, we can recommend it. Right. Um, and I think this is the one where we would have to for example, in this case, we would have to recommend 47,500 from these three other sources be added to the school budget. And then we would have to re request the town council after the budget's passed to take money out of the stabilization fund. Correct. Uh, Unless we find anything else. And, and, you know, we could argue on benefits and all that stuff. The only rational thing I guess I could make an argument for would be council reserve, which is money that's, you know, again, not used for the council. It's used just like a free cash, basically. It's just used to, to pay bills that might come up. And could we reduce it by 20,000? It's possible, but yeah, I think that's, and hopefully we have some more answers on the unemployment and the, you know, like Bill was saying, do can we have some more definitive numbers if that 200 is a real number? There's 100, you know, if we said, hey, we might be able to get you 100 if that's going to do it. You know, maybe we could have some more clarification for Monday. Where, where do we get that? I would say the superintendent. Yeah, who, who's, who would like to do that? I'll be happy to talk to her. I don't, I don't mind talking to her because I think we need to, we need to get as much good information as we can. Um, and you can also maybe ask her because she, she should know when, when oh, the, the unemployment the layoffs is felt. Is it immediately? Uh, or does it wait till the beginning of the school year? I'll ask, I'll ask uh, Anna as well. And you ask Anna too, see if we get the same answer. Quick <laughs> <laughs> oh, comments I had on the school. Um, if I said earlier that, you know, they were doing nothing, I want to correct that. Uh, that's certainly wrong. I don't think anybody, I don't think they're doing nothing. I just think that the schools are not open to students right now. And, uh, you know, most of them are doing less than they, I think, do during a regular year. Some probably are doing more. Um, but um, I feel like every year the school comes to the council and has, you know, requests that we find a little aggressive. Uh, and I think it is part of that nature, ask for as much as you can and, you know, back off it. Um, and again, so my feeling was just, you know, if in this year, if they still are requesting a million dollars, if, if in this year we can't get the school to have a less aggressive budget, then when, you know, if ever. And um, to make a kind of a cheesy analogy, <clears throat> we've been talking about the, uh, it's raining. It's uh, the stabilization fund, it's raining. I feel like it is raining for all the taxpayers in the town, but the school seems to have a pretty good umbrella and I don't see the rain getting on them, um, but I feel like it is gonna rain. And uh, um, that's my cheesy analogy. Well, that, that was my point, Bill. I, I agree with I agree with that, and, and it actually is raining outside right now. I'm looking at lightning, <laughs> hearing thunder. <laughs> A good um, note to end on. So, is everybody available to meet on Monday evening? It's coming Monday. Yeah. Yes. We're I still can't go anywhere. Yeah. yeah. We still can't go anywhere. All right. We'll post a meeting tomorrow with Carla. Um, that give us the two days. Thursday, Friday for Monday. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll wrap this up then. Anything so do you, you, oh. do you feel comfortable wrapping it up Monday? Do you wanna just post Wednesday just to have, or you feel pretty comfortable to wrap it up Monday? We're pretty uh, close. We can, we can post Wednesday. We, if we don't need to, we'll cancel it. I yeah. think we should plan on wrapping up Monday. I think we can. Oh, I'd like to. I, well, I was planning to wrap it up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, well, well, I agree. It, it'll be I'd like to meeting. wrap up Monday too because I would like to have a couple of finance committee meetings too. But I, I would like to. I just wouldn't want to get into a position where, you know, we couldn't think figure out something and then couldn't post for Wednesday. Yeah. Um, you right. know, we could we'll, always get rid of it. We'll yeah. post for Wednesday as well. But we, the goal here would be to wrap it up on wrap Monday. it up Monday. I think we can. Yeah. And what time Monday? Is it 5.30 again? Or uh, whatever, 6.30? 6.30, is that all right? Yeah. Yep. yeah. And I'd like to thank... 6.30 Monday. 6.30 Monday? 
And yeah. Wednesday, Kyla. And Wednesday. Right. Okay. Wednesday, just a safety net. Um, and I'd also like to thank uh, Rich, Jim, and Tracy. This is your third night, I know, of uh, town work. I thank you all for your service because I don't know how late your meeting ran last night, but you know, here it is, it's almost nine o'clock tonight. So I thank the three of you very much for your time.